Y'all have to promise not to laugh, but I'm about to show you one of the most pitiful plots of sweet corn I've ever had. So it is what it is. Here's our plot of Primus sweet corn, our fall sweet corn that we planted. And not long after we planted this, just a few days, a few of them were coming up and then old Sally come through and dumped over six inches of rain on us here. And that's why you see all this sparse spacing and different size corn stalks. It's just not consistent at all. This first row here looks okay. I can deal with that. But the further we go along here, the kind of more sparse everything looks. Now these plants here, I can tell they need a little water and we're going to take care of that in a minute here. So we got five rows that we put in here like i said the first row or two look okay we get along to this row here it's not looking as good and this fourth row here down here where we had a bad washout and just nothing down there and up here at the beginning of the row we can see not a whole lot going on up here either and then this final row this fifth row is not even worth messing with i got something for this last row here we'll do that later in the video but i didn't think i had time to replant it because i was already a little late on getting it planted and so i just kind of let it ride it's not going to be a ton of corn but it should be enough for us to eat here like i said we weren't going to put any of this up because we put up a bunch already from two crops we've grown in the spring and summer so we're not going to try to preserve any of this and hopefully we'll get a few ears and it at least give us a chance to try this primus variety and see how we like it so we're going to scrap this last row here and i'll show you what we're going to do with that in a minute but this corn that is growing is on up about i'd say 12 inches tall in some spots and it got a little windy the other night and you can see that's why some of them are leaning over so we need to support these guys throw a little dirt to them do what we call hill them throw a little dirt to them throw a little fertilizer throw a little water to them so today is all about kind of nurturing and babying what's left of this corn plot right here now before we Hill or throw some dirt to our corn we always like to side dress it that's the perfect time to do it and what we always like to side dress with is this stuff right here our Chilean nitrate or organic nitrogen great little nitrogen little organic nitrogen source that works great on corn and uh, so we're going to take some of this and we're going to sprinkle it alongside the row and then we'll grab our high arch wheel hoe and it'll be time for some healing action all right all right all right well that does look a little better than it did i believe that corn's greening up already i laid a few of them down with the plows but uh that's all right we got enough corn in there i think to get some decent pollination that's always a pretty sight right there freshly healed rows of corn now while i was in here healing it i hadn't noticed this before but good thing i noticed it now let me find one here see that right there and earworms is already in here they the earworm pressure is worst in the fall like this well, so they already been in here a gnawing on my corn stalks and if you ain't careful they'll gnaw them to the ground and inhibit all the growth you can see this one right here they've been gnawing on that one there too haven't gnawed on all of them but they've been a gnawing and i got something for that so this afternoon right before dark 
I'll hit them with some of that. Usually we don't hit them with that until we start seeing silks form, but that spinosad works like a charm. And if we see that worm pressure early, we need to go ahead and nip it in the bud. And this stuff right here will certainly do it. So I'll get on me a regimen of some spinosad about twice a week since I already got some pressure. And we'll knock that problem out. That way we won't have it when we get our ears. And now back to this last row here which wasn't worth healing, wasn't worth saving. You can see all that rain even washed away my drip tape that was buried there. But I got something for it here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna rip up this line right here. So I'll go to the end here in a minute, pull all this back. We're gonna leave it connected right there to the main line. Just gonna pull that drip tape over here on this side, run through there with the wheel, probably with the sweeps on, cultivate it, knock down that stuff is a few plants that are growing in there. We're gonna knock that down. We're gonna rebury this line of tape here. So we'll make us a furrow, lay it back out, turn our water on, cover it up. That corner there's gonna need some water too. We're gonna rebury that line of tape there and I'll show you what we're gonna plant there. So several weeks ago on our row by row show, which airs every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, we did a little show on seed starting and I started a tray of onion plants and Greg started this tray of lettuce here. This is a variety called Tehama. And uh, we started carrying this last year and it is one of my favorite lettuce varieties. Makes real big heads, pretty heat tolerant. Uh, just an awesome, awesome lettuce variety. Doesn't make tight heads like romaine, it's a little loose with the biggest heads of this type of lettuce that I've ever seen. So this tray here, which looks nice and full, is pretty close to being ready. Some of them are ready. Some of them are a little smaller and I can tell if I pull on those, they'll break off. But some of these in the middle here are big enough to where we can pull them out of the cell. And I'm not gonna need this whole tray. I gotta save some for Miss Hoss, AKA Mama. But I pulled one out of the middle and you can see there, we can see the root development on that plug there. And uh, everything's holding together as far as that little soil cell there. So that guy there can be put in the ground and that's a nice looking transplant there. It's not wrapped, we've got a solid root ball and uh, that means this thing will take off quick once we put it in the ground. So what I'm gonna do is just cherry pick out of here, the ones that are bigger or big enough to pull out of the cells just by tugging on them. And we're gonna get some of these in the ground where that bad last row of corn was. So let me get that drip tape situated and then we'll put these puppies in the ground. All right, all right, all right. We got that cleaned up. Got that line of drip tape reburied there. Anytime you're reburying tape like this, which is really easy to do with a wheel hoe, want to make sure you turn on that drip line, let it inflate before you cover it up. It just makes it a whole lot easier. It stretches it out and uh, makes covering it with those plows a lot easier. Now you will notice down here, I got this wet spot that popped up right here and uh, I had sprung a leak in one of my lines. So this thing was spraying from way, way over here on this first row. Had a little tiny pinhole leak and it was shooting water everywhere, but that's not a big deal. We just take our coupling like that, patch it up, and then we're good to go. So got the water running on the corn. We got the water running right here where we're gonna put our lettuce. Gonna wait a few minutes so we start seeing those water spots pop up where those emitters are every 12 inches along the row. 
and then we'll be ready to get some lettuce in the ground. So I got my tray of lettuce right here and I can't quite see where those water spots are yet, but I can kind of feel around for them and I kind of know what that distance is between the emitters so we can kind of reach down in there and the, find that tape and find where that emitter is. For instance, there's one right there at the beginning of the row, so 12 inches from that's gonna be about right there. And uh, I can see water coming out right there. So that's where we're gonna put our first plant. Now, if you watched our videos a lot, you know I love planting stuff on double rows. That plow set makes two nice little mini furrows there, and lettuce works great planting on double rows. A great way to get, you know, double the plants out of your drip tape and also maximize space in your garden. However, I have officially retired from market farming, and I'm doing things a little different this year because I don't need to grow quite as much because we're not selling anything anymore. And so I'm not going to plant a double row right here, but I'll show you what it would look like if I was going to plant a double row. So when I was planting double rows, I didn't pay any attention to where the emitters are because these things put out enough water. It's going to equally water this entire space right here, including the gaps between the emitters. So I didn't worry about where the emitters were, and I just would put these things in here about 8 to 12. There's a double right there. Let me pull that out. I put them about 8 to 12 inches apart, so about like that. And then on this side, I would stagger them, give them a little more room. So I put this one in between those two, and then I'd put another one right here. And have me a nice little double row. And that works perfect. Um, you may have to kind of just scuff up this soil a little bit when these plants are young. Once they go and they shade out this area, you don't have to worry about any weeds. Double rows of lettuce works awesome. I'm not going to do that today because like I said we're not growing as much this year because we're not market farming anymore so here I'm just going to plant a single row and I'm just going to put one plant on top of each emitter so I got an emitter there and uh, about 12 inches from that find the tape here and there we go I can feel a little water coming out right there so I'm going to stick me another one in the ground right here and then we'll work our way on down the row here Probably got another one about right, well, right there. We'll put another plant in right here. And if you got plenty of time, you can wait on to where you'll see those water spots. I can see this one down here where we'll put another plant. So you'll start to see the discoloration in the soil there where those water spots are. Or you can just kind of feel down there for them. So, single row, I'm going to do it like this. These heads get pretty big, so that should kind of fill up this space right here. Um, if we were doing the double row, we'd stack them in here a lot tighter. You can do it either way you want. just depends on how much food you need to grow. Now, as I was planting this lettuce, I had a little bit of an aha moment. So, this lettuce is not going to need near as much water as that corn is. Especially once that corn gets up and going, we'll leave it running all night. We don't want to water this lettuce that much. Because if we get it too wet around the base there, start to get some rotten and that's just not good. So, what I need to do is I need to put me a valve row start on right here. So, when I turn the water on this plot, I can let it run a little bit on this lettuce and then turn it off still let it run on that corn and uh, it's just going to work out a lot better so i'm going to try to do this with the water on it might spray a little water but i think we can do it if we're really fast so let's unhook this guy here and put that in there i got the valve turned off and we're going to just reattach this right here tighten it down we'll turn our valve on this way and reinflate those lines and uh, a little muddy there but we should be good to go now now we can just switch this off when we don't want to water this particular line anymore but want to water everything else that's on this piece of main line right here and that's all there is to it folks got us about a 30 foot row of Tejama lettuce planted there 12 foot spacing should be just about right like I said you can put them a little closer if you want to about eight inches will be fine if you really need to maximize your space 
and those ought to do pretty good they ought to take off pretty quick once they overcome a little bit of transplant shock for a couple days and uh that secret sauce we put down in there once that stuff starts converting over these things will take off get nice and big and green and this is some good eating stuff right here and due to this kind of early fall we're having this cooler weather coming sooner in the year i'm able to get lettuce in the ground earlier a lot earlier than i was last year last year temperatures didn't start breaking until mid to late october and so my lettuce planting was delayed quite a bit but it's nice to go ahead and get some in the ground We've got several other varieties growing in the greenhouse that are just coming up we'll be planting a lot more lettuce as the fall progresses even on into early winter we can grow it all throughout the cool season down here it doesn't really get cold enough to bite it back hardly any it can take a light frost so nice to go ahead and get some in the ground we'll have a lot more coming in the ground some other plots where we're just going to be planting all cool weather stuff so the moral of the story here is that when you're gardening and you're growing your own food you got to be able to roll with the punches you got to be able to bounce back got to have a plan b now this corn plot isn't going to be as fantastic as we thought it was going to be before sally come through and dumped all that rain but we're going to make the best out of it and hopefully we're going to get a few ears to have hopefully they come off right around thanksgiving and as far as that other road that just didn't make it it was quite nice that we had those lettuce transplants in the greenhouse ready to go so we could put something there and make use of that little spot on the end of the plot i'll put some links in the description below to all the tools we use today and to this tehama lettuce seeds so you can go grab you some of that if you enjoyed this video make sure to give me a big thumbs up don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button so you get notified every time we come out with a new video and if you did enjoy this video check out these other two videos right here one on fall sweet corn and another on planting more lettuce we'll see you next time